Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about EJS. Now what EJS is, is a template language and that's going to allow us to write more dynamic web pages. So to get started, what we have here is a static HTML file. You can see that we have dummy data here. So when it says you searched for stuff and we have search results of dummy data. Now, what we want to do is use this HTML file as a template that we can use for serving dynamic data. So one way to do that is if we go back to Visual Studio Code, we could set the view of our Express application. And in order to do that, we go here and we can say app.set is going to take in two arguments. We're going to specify the view engine. The second argument is going to be the template that you want to use. So we're just going to say EJS. Once we set the view engine to EJS, we're going to have to hit control B and we're going to have to create a folder called views. And this is going to store our EJS templates. So I'm just going to go down here, right click new folder, and we're going to call this views. Now express is going to automatically know that our templates are located in the views folder because that's the default folder that it looks for. So now if I create my views folder, if I right click new file, and instead of saying index.html, I specify index.ejs. So now that I have my index.ejs file, I'm just going to go to my index.html. I'm going to copy all of this. And I'm just going to paste the code within my index.ejs. So now I'm just going to save this. I'm going to go to app.js. And what we do with templates is that we render them to the user. So I'm just going to hit control B and get rid of the package explorer. And instead of sending a static file, I'm just going to remove this. And now we're going to say res.render and then followed by the name of the file that you want to render, index. Now you do not need to specify the .ejs on the side and that's because we already told Express that we are using ejs as the template. So now if I was to save this, just gonna hit Control C, Node App, head over to Chrome, we're gonna hit Refresh, and you can see that we get the same exact output. So what happened here? Well, when we render this index.ejs file, what's happening is the server is going to look at this ejs file for ejs code. It's going to execute it and then send back to the client an HTML file. So now let's actually send data to send back to our ejs file. So from here, I'm just gonna give us a route parameter. I'm just gonna say user query. And here we're going to pass in an object and this is going to be the data that we want to display within our index.ejs template. So now I'm just going to give it a property. First I'll say data, then I'll give it a property of user query. And then we're going to pass in request.params.userQuery. So now if I save this, I'm just going to hit control C just to exit out of our server. Now we're going to go to our EJS file. We're going to go here to our template. And now from here, we're going to specify less than percent sign equal. What this means is I want you to output onto the HTML file. Next, what we're going to do is access the data that we just passed in. So how did we do that? Well, we gave it the property data. Then we said dot user query. Afterwards, we end it with percent sign and then that. So now this is going to look at our app.js. It's going to say, OK, I want to render the index page. And this is the data that I'm receiving. So we went to data dot user query. 
So now if I was to save this index.ejs template, let's start back the server, node app. Let's go to Chrome, hit refresh. You can see that we get cannot get forward slash and that's because we added a route parameter. So let's say the user searched for books, for example. Then it says, hey, you search for books. So imagine if this was a real website and we were on Amazon or eBay, you would do a search. So then on top of that web page, you would get, hey, you searched for books. You searched for PCs. You searched for whatever. So that means I could use this EJS template for all the items within my website. So now let's actually add some dummy data. So if I go back to Visual Studio Code, and what we're gonna do is instead of having hard coded stuff here, when the user types in, we search for books, we're gonna display a bunch of books. So I'm just gonna go to app.js, we're going to pass in more dummy data. So we have data, user query. We're going to pass in another thing. And I'm just going to give it a enter key to make it fit all on one line. And we're going to pass in an array. And this is going to be the search results. Search results. Pass in an array. And we're just going to say book one, book two and book three. So now if I save this, go to my index.ejs file, instead of saying dummy data, what we can do is we could go to data because that's the object that we're passing in. We're going to say search results. And then since it's an array, we can access index zero. And this is going to give us our first position. And remember, since we this is an EJS template, we're going to have to wrap this up within the following. And now if I was to save this, let's cancel out the server, restart it up, go to Chrome, hit refresh. And you can see that now we're dynamically populating the web page. So now let's head back to Visual Studio Code. And what I want to do is instead of just outputting data dot search results that index zero data dot search results index one, what we can do is use a for each loop. So for example, let's get rid of all this. And instead of that, we're going to pass in less than percent sign we're going to get our array. So what's our array at data dot search results dot for each. We get our result. And remember, we're going to end this with a percent sign less than. And the reason why we don't have an equal sign here is because we are not outputting this onto the HTML file. So for example, if I want to output this equal sign, if you don't want to output it, no equal sign. Next within here, what we're going to do is we're going to display what we want to output. So now what we're going to do is use less than percent sign equal, because we actually want this to output to the HTML file. So I'm just going to say li. result and let's close our li tag so now we have to end this so we're just going to end it with percent sign we're not going to use the equal sign because we do not want to output this to the user so now if i was to save this we go down here control c node app Go to Chrome, hit refresh, and you can see that our search results gets dynamically added. So if we search for books and there was a million books, this code will work for a million books. If we searched for 
iPhones and there was only three types of iPhones, this code will work for three iPhones. So now let's do an example involving conditionals. So we're just going to give a simple if statement. If the user is logged in, we want you to display this. If the user is not logged in, then we're not going to display anything extra. So now if I go back to Visual Studio Code, let's write an if statement underneath our h1 tag. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to say this. If data dot logged in. And this is going to be a Boolean containing true or false. Let's end this here. And now the meat of our if statement is going to be the HTML output that we want to do. So now I'm just going to say H2. You are logged in as data dot username. And that sense line. And then let's close our H2 tag. Now we have to wrap up our if statement. So let's close our if statement. And all we're going to do is just do the following EJS. Close our if statement. And remember, we're not using the equal sign because we're not wanting to output this. And we're not using the equal sign up here because we don't want to output this if statement. So now if I was to save our index.ejs file, let's go to app.js. And we're going to pass in those properties that we added to our index.ejs file. So we passed in logged in. And for this example, we're just going to set true. And the username is going to be this. So I'm just going to go to index.ejs just to see if we matched up properly. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. Logged in. We use the username here. Make sure everything matches up. Let's save this. Control C. Node app. Head over to Chrome. Hit refresh. And you can see that since we are logged in, we're displaying our H2 tag. You are logged in as so and so. If we set that to false, our H2 tag wouldn't appear. So that's basically the ins and outs of how you can use EJS within your Express application.